Imagine this. You wake up in the morning, but something feels off. The world begins to move backward. Your coffee, once cold, heats itself back up. A shattered glass pieces itself together, and instead of getting out of bed, you find yourself lying back down. Oh, hold on a second. Is this the plot of some new sci-fi movie? Or has reality officially glitched? Relax, Flux. No need to panic. It's just a thought experiment. We're trying to figure out why time always moves forward. Oh, well, in that case, carry on. Although I must say, self-heating coffee sounds like a feature I could get behind. Every second ticks by, clock hands move forward, and the past fades into memory. But what if that's all an illusion? An illusion created by the laws of nature? Or perhaps by our own minds? Hmm. So we're just pawns in nature's grand game? Who's the game designer here? Entropy? Entropy, yes. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Today, you'll learn. Why the universe always trends toward chaos, how time might be slowed, or even stopped, and why your tea always cools down, never heats itself back up. Oh, this sounds like a fun episode. Just promise the explanations will be simple. I don't want to feel like the clueless one while the physicists show off. Simple, Flux, I promise. And to our viewers, have you ever wondered if time could actually run backward, like in the movies? Share your thoughts in the comments, and buckle up, because we're about to take a journey through time. A journey through time? I just hope it doesn't involve fixing past mistakes. No, Flux, nothing like that. We're just here to uncover what keeps time moving in one direction, and we'll start at the very beginning. Thermodynamics is one of the most fundamental fields of physics, but how did it come to be? The ideas about the nature of heat and energy began long before its formal establishment. As early as the 17th century, scientists like Robert Boyle conducted experiments with gases, while philosophers debated whether heat was a material substance or the movement of particles. These discussions and studies laid the groundwork for a more systematic approach that evolved into thermodynamics. Its origins can be traced back to the 19th century, when scientists like Sadi Carnot and Rudolf Clausius sought to understand how steam engines worked. They were searching for laws to explain how heat transforms into work. Wait a second, so thermodynamics was born because of steam engines? People just wanted to save coal? Exactly. It all started with a practical problem, how to make machines more efficient. But in the process, scientists discovered the second law of thermodynamics, which later became the key to understanding the arrow of time. The arrow of time explains why events unfold in a specific sequence. The term arrow of time was popularized by astrophysicist Arthur Eddington in 1927. He used it to describe the irreversible nature of time, emphasizing that this phenomenon is closely tied to the increase of entropy in the universe. In the past, a glass is whole. In the present, it falls. In the future, it shatters. We never see the reverse. It's like movies. You can rewind them, but life doesn't work that way. That's right. And it's the second law of thermodynamics that's responsible for this. It states that everything in the universe tends toward a state of maximum disorder, or what scientists call high entropy. Entropy is what makes the past and future distinct. But what is entropy? The concept was first introduced by Rudolf Clausius in the 1850s. In his 1850 paper on the moving force of heat, he described the second law of thermodynamics for the first time. He viewed heat as the chaotic motion of molecules. As energy disperses, the system loses order. So ice is like molecules in a parade? And when it melts, the parade turns into a party? You could put it that way. When ice melts, molecules start moving faster, occupying more space. That's entropy increasing. A balloon is another example. When you let it go, air rushes out and spreads into more space. This is an irreversible process, just like time. Hold on, if everything moves toward chaos, why doesn't the universe just turn into one big chaotic party? Don't processes like star formation show that locally, entropy can decrease even as its overall level rises? Good question. 
Entropy doesn't grow randomly, it follows strict laws. Take the universe. After the Big Bang, it was in a state of low entropy. Everything was orderly, like an ice cube. Over time, structures break down, but on a large scale, organized systems like galaxies, stars and planets remain. Interestingly, human life is also a fight against entropy. We maintain order in our bodies by consuming energy to counteract chaos. But no matter how hard we try, entropy always wins in the end. So even I, a cartoon, need to worry about turning into chaos? Well, in your case, Flux, that depends on who's writing the code. But entropy is only part of the story. It explains why time moves forward, but not what time itself is. This question has fascinated scientists and philosophers for centuries. For example, Arthur Eddington, who popularized the term arrow of time, spoke of temporal asymmetry and the irreversibility of processes. His ideas describe not only a physical phenomenon, but also philosophical aspects of time as a category of existence. So what lies behind the concept of time? Is it merely a convenient tool of our brains or something more profound? To explore this, we need to delve into the theory of relativity. What is time? For many, it's the ticking of a clock on the wall or the hands on a smartphone screen. But Albert Einstein revealed that time isn't a rigid, unchanging parameter. Instead, it's part of a flexible fabric known as space-time. Wait, so time isn't its own thing, but part of some cosmic fabric? Like cotton, but you know, intergalactic. You could say that, Flux. Space and time are interconnected, thanks to Einstein and his general theory of relativity. And this isn't just theoretical, it completely transformed how we see the universe. For example, mass and energy can bend this fabric, creating an effect known as gravitational time dilation. Before Einstein, scientists considered time an absolute entity, flowing uniformly for everyone. However, the German mathematician Hermann Minkowski was the first to propose merging space and time into a four-dimensional continuum. Einstein took it further, proving that this continuum could be altered by massive objects. Einstein and Minkowski? Sounds like a superhero duo. Did they even know what they were talking about? They knew so well that their work reshaped the entire world. For instance, in 1915, Einstein published his general theory of relativity, showing that time depends on gravity. This effect is something we experience today. For instance, clocks on GPS satellites tick faster than those on Earth's surface. To ensure your smartphone gives accurate coordinates, scientists account for time dilation. Without this, the error would grow by kilometers in just one day. So, every time I find the nearest burger joint, it's thanks to Einstein? Well, hats off to you, Albert, for revolutionizing fast food tech. Gravity doesn't just keep us grounded. It literally stretches time. The stronger the gravitational pull, the slower time flows. This effect becomes especially pronounced near black holes, the most extreme objects in the universe. At the event horizon of a black hole, time almost stops. Imagine an astronaut approaching the event horizon. To an outside observer, their movements would slow down until they appeared frozen in time. But for the astronaut, time would flow normally. Wait, so for me, everything feels normal, but to everyone else, I'm like a statue? What if there's another world inside the black hole? Maybe there's already a burger joint there. Theoretically, inside the event horizon lies a singularity a point where the usual laws of physics break down. You can go in, but there's no way out. Well, black holes are definitely not a vacation spot. Guess I'll scratch that off my travel plans. But the theory of relativity isn't just about science. Time is also a philosophical concept. Why does it seem to speed up as we age or slow down in moments of fear? This subjective experience of time makes it even more mysterious. Einstein once said, the distinction between past, present, and future is only an illusion, albeit a persistent one. An illusion? Maybe time is just the universe's biggest joke. Perhaps, Flux. But for scientists, it's also the key to unlocking the deepest questions about the nature of reality. Time is not only a scientific concept, but also a deeply personal experience. For physicists, it's a dimension. For philosophers, a mystery. And for us, it's an elusive companion that only moves forward. So, we can't outrun time, but we can try to understand it better.
or at least give it a shot. Relativity, thermodynamics, subjective perception. All of these show us how complex and multifaceted time truly is. We may never be able to turn back the clock or peek into the future, but maybe that's okay. After all, time is what makes every moment unique. You know, I've got an idea. Stop chasing time and just enjoy pizza. Perhaps the best way to handle the flow of time is to learn to live in the here and now. Because time isn't just a dimension. It's a story we write every second of our lives. What story will you write?